back on Inside Tennessee with Congressman Chuck Fleischman. John? Congressman, continuing on the discussion about TVA, I just would like to hear your thoughts. Uh, there have been, some would argue, some sort of alarm bells going off about TVA and how it's been lately, questions about its transparency, even questions the Memphis utility has, there have been studies that say Memphis utility could leave TVA and do a better job. I'm just wondering, as you know, TVA has a large presence in the third district. It's got a large presence right here in the second district. Does it need to fix itself? I think agencies such as TVA always need to go through improvement just as any other corporation would, uh, even those in government and public service would. I don't think anyone needs to remain static. So I think we should always be looking at ongoing pro progress. That might be in terms of transparency and the like. You're right. I actually have more TVA assets in my district mm -hmm. than any other congressman in America. And uh, on whole, obviously, they produce our power. They distribute that through distributors and, I think, uh, to an entire region. In some ways, it gives us a decided advantage over some parts of the country, which are rather envious of that. But do they need improvement in certain areas? Obviously, they do. President Trump has floated the idea of breaking it up, selling it. Is that a good idea? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, basically, if you look at where we are and where other utilities are in other parts of the country, where they are laden with debt, where they are laden with a situation where they are very high cost, particularly for residential customers. I have worked with TVA over the year to try to get their rates down for commercial customers because a lot of people didn't realize that those rates were not necessarily as competitive as some of the other utilities in the country. But for our residential users, and in Chattanooga we have a group called the Electric Power Board, EPB, working very close with our friends at ORNL. Um, we benefit a lot from what TVA is doing, but can they improve? Yes, there's no question and We about seem that. to forget that TVA is more than power sometimes. That's correct. So while that might be a, a Very good, function, flood control. Yeah, flood control, economic recreation. Development. Economic uh, development. Uh, economic development. And so you'll go on record this morning, and if President Trump says that he's going to come out and he's going to sell TVA, you will oppose him? Uh, President Trump does not have the authority to sell TVA. Uh, and there is no real momentum in Congress to do I, that. I know They're that, uh, but I don't know that President Trump understands that. <laughs> if President Trump says he's going to sell TVA, you will oppose him? When President Obama said he wanted to privatize TVA, I opposed and him And I then. criticized right. him as well for yes. that move. So yes. you will oppose President Trump? If anyone tries to privatize that, I will stand uh, in opposition Artfully to done. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, politics as well. You've been in the majority for yes. the majority of your tenure, and now you walk in as a member of the minority. Yes. How have things changed in Washington? Well, thank God I'm a member of the Appropriations Committee <laughs> because we always said there was Republicans and Democrats and appropriators. Uh, my power, obviously, in the minority would have waned considerably, but for the fact that I, I'm, I'm on this key appropriations committee, uh, my counterparts in the Senate will negotiate with me, and the fact that the Republicans have the majority in the Senate will bolster my ability in the House as an appropriator to get key funds for our great state of Tennessee. There's a lot of burden on my shoulders, but I think we will get it done, not only for Oak Ridge, but for our entire state. I've been talking with Governor Lee. He was my guest for the State of the Union, and I said, rest assured, Governor, I will work hard to bring federal dollars to our great state of Tennessee. What's happening with health insurance on the national level? You know, we talked about it in Tennessee and did not expand Medicaid here. So what are you hearing? Are there anything coming down the pike that might help the working poor get insurance? I really wish we could have real health care reform in this country. As you know, Susan, I opposed Obamacare. Right. I voted to repeal it and replace it. I really wish Republicans and Democrats could get in the room, and I think the president would work with us, and craft a plan, craft a a health care plan that actually worked for the vast majority of Americans, that reduced premiums, that gave patients more choice, uh, that reduced deductibles. The system is not working. It's falling apart. It's been dismantled partially by the courts, partially by Congress in, in tax reform. But we've got to look and see where are we going to go. 
Uh, we've seen premiums go up, choices go down. I think it's high time that we got together in a room like we did with this last situation and craft a solution that will have bipartisan and bicameral support. So Chuck, while you were in the majority, I often heard the phrase from your party, repeal and replace. Correct. And we saw you all act quite a bit on repeal. Nonetheless, I don't know that I ever saw a plan proposed by the Republicans, either then or now, that is, what do we replace it with? All it, we talk about is we take it apart and we take this out and that out, sure. and nobody has a replacement plan. Don, in the last vote that we had uh, uh, during the, the last Congress, we actually had a bill that did repeal and replace. That went to the Senate, and unfortunately, the late Senator John McCain went thumbs down and voted no. That was actually a repeal and replace bill. But replace with what? Well, it was replaced with a system that actually gave patients more choice, uh, let markets uh, uh, come in and dictate more free market policies, had the ability to purchase insurance across state lines, more free market choices. We need to sit down in this country and come up with the solution. Sort of like we works. had before, before Affordable Care, right? No, actually, we needed health care yeah. reform. Both parties let it linger out there. Unfortunately, when President Obama had the opportunity to work with Republicans and Democrats, he chose only to work with Democrats. When LBJ had the chance with civil rights to work with Republicans and Democrats, he worked with both. It worked. It lasted. Well, and I recall the Clintons trying the same thing and the Republicans killing it then. We do hear a lot from our state lawmakers about the, the need or desire on their perspective to have block grants. Is that something you could see working at the federal level where the feds give each state a chunk of money? I think block grants generally are more favorable because as you take money and you give it to a state, give it to a governor, and then you have your local state reps work to find out where the dollars go, I think that's a more preferable model than having federal bureaucrats actually do that. So it's not a cure-all, but it's a step in the right direction. Congressman. Fleischman, you are always generous to come see us. We appreciate your time very much. And I enjoy all of you all very much in the great debate. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. We're back with our talk around right after this.